Hi everyone, welcome to Netgate Chemistry. So in the previous video, we studied about the excitation theory and the charge contraction theory. So today we are going to study about the applications of charge contraction theory, which is a very important topic. Applications of charge contraction theory. The first application is the existence of hypervalent species. Existence of hypervalent species. If you don't know about hypervalent species, then we're going to study about it in this video only. Okay. Next is formation of halogen compounds by noble atoms like we have our neon argon krypton xenon these are all noble compounds or the inert compounds uh, which form uh, sorry not compounds noble atoms which form compounds with the halogens for example xcf4 even this is inert in nature but still it forms xcf4 compound that is the application of your charge contraction theory Next is non existence of some compounds. How we're going to discuss it right now? Okay. So, the first point was existence of hypervalent species first of all we should know what are hypervalent species so on the basis of octet on the basis of octet we can divide our species in three categories these three categories are your hypovalent species valence or precise species third are your hyper valent species these are your three kinds of species okay so hypovalent species are those species which have your incomplete octet okay but still they exist they have incomplete octet for example bbr3 bcl3 alcl3 etc see if you consider alcl3 then how many electrons are there in the valence shell of aluminum one one two three four five six six electrons are there but still it exists okay so these are your hypovalent species valent or precise species are those in which there is complete octet that is there are eight electrons in the valence shell or two maybe if required for example ch4 CCl4, carbon tetrachloride, CH, Cl3, okay. This is your chloroform, okay. Next, hypervalent species, which are required by us, okay. How these hypervalent species are formed? Due to excessive charge 
contraction see i told you in the last video how this charge contraction takes place what happens i have told you about the case of pf five what happens there are five f atoms surrounding this phosphorus so what happens these five f all these are electronegative in nature actually fluorine is the most electronegative in the periodic table so what happens due to like its electronegative nature it attracts the electron density of phosphorus towards itself all these five f making this phosphorus very much electron deficient so this phosphorus develops delta positive charge and these fluorines have delta negative charge so due to the formation of this delta positive charge this nucleus the nucleus of this phosphorus attracts the valence shell orbitals towards itself and due to this contraction what happens this pf5 exists why because due to this contraction the distance between your ns and nd is now decreased so the electron which is present in the ns orbitals can now excite to the orbital of nd and due to this excitation due to this excitation pf5 is formed okay so how many electrons are there in the valence shell of your phosphorus 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 10 electrons are there in the valence shell of phosphorus here here are eight electrons here are your six electrons so you can say that in case of hypovalent species the valence shell electrons are less than eight here valence shell electrons are equal to eight and here your valence shell electrons are more than eight okay you can generalize it this way okay so the second point was formation of halogen compounds by noble atoms see if we have your xenon okay and we have 4f it leads to the formation of xef4 but what makes this xenon although it is inert in nature what happens that this xenon forms four bonds with this four fluorine atoms uh, why this question is arising because xenon is inert in nature so why it is forming bond with these four fluorine atoms the answer is charge contraction why charge contraction takes place because fluorine is most electronegative in nature whenever fluorine is attached with any atom whether it is noble or it is reactive it is going to form bond because even though xenon is inert in nature it has eight electrons in the valence shell it is very stable in nature but when fluorine comes because it is electronegative in nature it attracts these electron densities towards itself and making the xenon poor electron poor in nature and because these four fluorine are withdrawing the electron density from this xenon this xenon develops delta positive charge and because this delta positive charge is now developed so the valence shell is contracted towards the nucleus which is explained by our charge contraction theory and then when the charge is contracted what happens the distance between your ns and d is decreased and then what happens the excitation becomes very easy when excitation takes place the electrons the electrons which are paired are now unpaired and they form bonds with these four fluorine atoms so this is how your xcf4 is formed so in simple language if someone asks you why xcf4 is formed even though xenon is inert in nature the answer is charge contraction okay because fluorine is very much electronegative in nature it withdraws the electron density from the xenon which is actually inert but due to the withdrawal of so much of electron density by these fluorines the xenon becomes delta positive develops delta positive charge 
and due to the development of this the valence shell is contracted and due to the contraction of the valence shell excitation takes place and these type of compounds are formed so i think this much is enough for today's video we'll continue in the next video thank you